How's it going rednecks? Today I'm going to be working on a transfer case for uh, disaster transport and uh, disaster transport is not ready for the transfer case yet. Um, the transmission for disaster transport is actually behind there and that's going to be in a whole other video. But this is a transfer case that is going to eliminate all the uh, electronic part of it and I'm going to go with a floor shift. I got this uh, transfer case from good old LKQ and uh, this is going to be, like I said, a lever style driven instead of an electronic style. And my plan is to gut this thing down. I want to get rid of the chain drive and everything in here that's not going to be important because right now all we're doing is we're sending power through here and it's going to the rear axle. We no longer use four wheel drive. The only reason I like having a transfer case is because now I have uh, two wheel high and two wheel low. So we're going to tear this thing apart. I'm going to try and figure out how I'm going to cap off this. And uh, yeah, as far as what it is, this is a NP261. So what do you say we uh, split the case, see what's all in there, and see what I can do to uh, cap off that output. Well, we ended up pulling this thing apart. Um, I would suggest putting a pry bar right in here. Uh, you gotta split this, uh, there's a little snap ring in there. And we had to pry that apart right through there. You split them two apart. And that's actually grabbing on the outer raceway of your bearing here. And then what we did is I uh, pounded the uh, end of the shaft here with a hammer while kind of supporting the bottom of the housing. And then we put a pry bar between the bearing and the housing. And it came right apart. Now. We've already looked this thing over briefly and it does not look good. The uh, pump has a hole worn right in it. Right here is actually part of the side of the pump. So it's not good, but we're going to continue tearing this thing apart. My main objective right now is to get this thing off. So I'm probably going to flip it around, pull the seal out, and there'll be a clip. Just like this I'm hoping on the other side. And then all of this will come out. But whatever we can get apart right now, I'm going to pull out so I can get this thing cleaned up. And then uh, we'll see what's going on right here. Well, the majority of it came out once we uh, removed the clip right here and that gear would just lift off. Um, we got both shift forks. Um, one of the planetaries, I believe there's a planetary gear in there. There's another planetary in here. Um, but what we're going to do right now is there is a clip inside of here. I don't know if you can really see it, but I'm going to try and get on that right. Let's see if I can get on it here quick a sec. Right there. There's a big old clip. So we're going to try and remove that. We're going to flip this whole assembly around and then I'm going to try and hammer that shaft right through and out of the housing. Alright, with the uh, bearing off the output shaft for the front uh, drive, what I want to do is cut this inner raceway out, pull all the bearings out, and then I want to weld a piece of steel around here, Then I'm going to take that over here and pound it back in. Unfortunately, the housing has a little slot in there for uh, oil to come out or to drain out from the uh, bearing. So I'm going to have to probably JB weld that over. I'll probably take this whole assembly when I take and put it in there. I'll pack it all full of JB weld and shove that thing in. Um, before we do that though, before we get to any of that, I want to pull this all apart because I don't need this gear anymore. I don't need this shift fork. I don't need any of this because this is all for the front output. As well as I want to get this pump off because I want to take a better look at that and uh, get a price for a new one. So what do you say we pull that shaft apart and see what's going on.
Well, there we go, Rednecks. That might have been a little bit of a pain in the butt. Them snap rings were a little bit much for my little uh, pair of snap ring pliers, but the uh, shaft actually has a collar on it. So we're going to be able to put the uh, pump, the bearing, and the speed sensor back on this side and we can get rid of all this this is just this isn't another planetary gear set like i thought this is just your uh, shift fork so it slides this right here and locks in this gear for four wheel drive so we'll be able to get rid of this off that shaft this is the uh, shift fork this is uh the output shaft this is our uh, belt and then our output shaft all together so now with that being said there is another shift fork inside of this transfer case so if I have to, I'm going to cut the uh, two uh, ears off of this and just use that shaft as a spacer for the other shift fork that's uh, down in the bucket right there. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to get all the stuff that I'm going to be reusing, obviously the uh, housing and all the parts that I'm going to be using. I'm going to get that all cleaned up. So we're going to end the video for right now. Um, I'm going to catch back up to, with you guys uh, when we got all this stuff clean and then we can uh, start reassembling. Well, Rednecks, it's uh, been a few days and uh, I did a thing. So, long story short, I've had this transfer case laying behind my garage now for about uh, two years and it's about time I get to use it. Um, that is a 246 and this is a 261, so the manual shift versus the electronic shift. And there's quite a few differences. I'm not going to go over all of them, but if you take a look, this is the manual shift and it has aluminum arms. Now this is not their orientation, I just quick threw them in here to give you a representation. But if you come over here, Look at that, this one has steel arms on it. There's uh, one right there and then there's one here. And it uses little rocker bushings right here to shift up and down so it pulls the fork up and down like that. And those are those pins right there. Now the case over here has a spot for them but they're not actually uh, drilled or tapped or anything. So you couldn't even put this stuff in here if you wanted to. And I'm pretty sure you probably won't be able to put this stuff from the 261 into the 246. And on top of that, there is your four low for the 261, and that's your four low for the 246. So there's quite a few differences. Obviously, uh, just the drums alone and the housings probably aren't it. I'm not going to go through and figure it all out. All I'm after is this guy right here. That is the oil pump on the 246. Now I'm going to try and replace this one that is uh, damaged right there. That's actually the pump coming through the housing. So yeah, let's see if we can get that one off and see if it's the same as that one. Well, with the uh, 246 and the 261 torn apart, there are unfortunately a lot of differences between the two. If you take a look, I'll take the snap ring from the 261 and put it on the shaft. And as you can see, that's where the uh, snap ring would go. If I take it over here to the 246, it'll slide right past. That's where the snap ring needs to go because that machine surface is a lot narrower than that one. Um, as well as the gears right here, I believe this is your speed sensor. Those are different heights. The uh, bearings, those are different heights. And unfortunately, the pump opening for the 261 is different than the 246, so I won't be able to use this pump, unfortunately. So let's be honest, how many of you thought I was going to give up? Yeah, I'm not going to give up being this far into it. Uh, I got a T15 Torx right there. I'm going to try and pull these pumps apart and see if I can use the uh, housing from the 246 
and the 261. So let's pull these palms apart and see if I can't make something out of the two of them. All I need is 10 more minutes, 10 more minutes with you. Let me give it all one last shot, will I ever get through to you? I haven't looked yet, and uh, I have my doubts they would do this, but what are the chances that these gears are the same right here? Um, this one right here will not come out, which is fine, because uh, technically, if this gear is the same as that one, then I should be able to put it right in there and put this housing back together. So let's see if this, uh, this is the 261, and that's the 246. Yes! Look at that. The gears are the same, but the center cutout's different. So I'm going to get this gear cleaned up, set it in there, and then I'll put that housing back together. So, yeah. It was worth going in a little bit further, and now I don't need to buy a pump. Oh, am I wasting my time? Should I leave for the night? It's unclear at the moment. Can you give me a sign? I'm here trying and trying. I need ten more minutes with you. So let me know if you gave up hope. Do I leave you alone or I leave you alone? So let me know if you gave up hope by now. There we go, we took uh, two pumps, turned them into one, and that should work for us. I put a transmission assembly lube on it just to kind of help it out. I'm not too worried about it. Um, as far as torque specs goes, I'm above that. I don't need torque specs. I just tightened it down and made the old clicking sound and it should be good to go. With that being said, we now have a good pump. I'm gonna get that installed on the shaft and then uh, I still need to figure out the plug for the four wheel drive output side of the housing. And as well as I want to weigh some of this stuff, so we got a little bit of work ahead of us still. Let's get that uh, on the shaft, make sure everything looks good, and then uh, we'll go from there. Well, there we go. We have the uh, front portion of the transfer case all put back together. It's all cleaned up. The only thing we are missing is the uh, plug that I need to build for right here. Um, I did notice that the shaft has a hole in it right here for oiling, and that's what your pump's going to be oiling. There's another hole in the shaft down there, and there's a needle bearing, but I'm not going to worry about it too much. I think there's going to be enough uh, pressure or flow being created that it's not going to really matter that much that if I plug that hole or too much comes out of it. But before I make the plug, I want to weigh everything. I'm too excited. I want to know how much uh, everything here weighs. This is everything that's not going to be going back in minus the outer raceway of the bearing because that's going to be what we're going to build our plug out of. But yeah, I'm too excited. I want to weigh that stuff and I want to see what this stuff weighs. So... Let's see how much weight reduction we got. Boy, oh boy, 22 pounds. That ain't too bad. And uh, you guys might not think that's a lot, but every little bit matters. And I'm going to tell you right now, installing that transfer case with uh, 22 pounds lighter, that's going to be a heck of a lot nicer. So... What do you say we uh, take the uh, bearing now? Now we gotta cut the inner raceway out and get all the bearings out and we need to build our plug.
man, is it nice having a welder. And I gotta say, this turned out pretty good. The uh, welds are pretty good, other than right there where I went from a spot weld to welding, but I'm not too concerned about it. I will mix my uh, JB weld up in here and then smear it around the outside before we put it in the uh, housing. And uh, speaking of JB weld, unfortunately I don't have any. It's about 11 o'clock at night, so I'm going to go get some tomorrow, and when I do, we will pop this thing in. All that's really left to do on the casings for right now is I need to clean the uh, front ceiling surface of that one. Then I need to clean the ceiling surface of the back casing and clean it. And I'll do all that off camera. You guys don't want to watch that. So tomorrow we'll JB weld this thing in and hopefully be able to finish this thing up. Well, it's the uh, next day and I went and I got my uh, original JB weld. I went with the uh, original recipe, I guess you would call it as well as I got a wire brush for my drill so I can clean up the welds and I've already done that and I want to run the wire brush around inside of here to give the uh, JB weld something to hold on to so when we uh, pound this thing in it'll actually cling on and hopefully uh, stay more secure so what do you say we use our wire brush get that surface cleaned up get our JB weld mix it up and pound that thing in Well, it's been approximately six hours, and uh, according to the instructions, four to six hours, and it will set, and 15 to 24, and it'll cure. And right now, it's kind of tacky. If I uh, touch it with my finger, it's a little bit tacky, leaves my fingerprint, but I'm not going to wait 15 hours. We're going to put this thing together, and uh, to do that, I'm going to use something called Permatex, the right stuff. And that's going to be my gasket for all the way around here, and that's going to take the uh, front piece and bond it to the uh, back piece. And uh, I've never done this before, so hopefully the two pieces will slide back together pretty easy. I imagine the uh, biggest concern is gonna be that bearing right there, getting it in the back of the housing, but yeah, stay tuned, we'll find out. we go we have our uh, 261 transfer case all figured out it does still need an output shaft seal but I'm not going to worry about that because the uh, JB weld still needs to dry in this thing but uh, hopefully next time we see this thing it'll be all cleaned off have a seal on it and we'll be putting in the uh, transmission that's buried back there but yeah hopefully you guys enjoyed the video like comment share subscribe and get back to work <laughs> you look so grumpy. <laughs>